All right, freaks and freakettes, it's time. Yes, indeed, it is time for another brand new student of the gun radio. Aren't you lucky? Yes, you are. Lucky. You're lucky. You're fortunate. It's a good thing you're here. So uh, we're talking about knives. We posted a picture. This is just a little inside of baseball here. We were down at the uh, SDS Imports, uh, had a booth collection. They had a, a collection for the the Takarov line, and they had a collection for the the Mac, the Military Armament Corporation. A lot of you guys who know what a Mac 10 or a Mac 11 is, Mac 10, yeah, Mac 10. Uh, a Mac is short for Military Armament Corporation, and that goes way back. MAC goes way back to the Cold War, to the Nam era. Now, in there, in the booth, what they had was they had the JSOC 45, and they also had a, uh, a fighting dagger, a fighting knife dagger, and uh, with a gray handle. And peoples were like, hey, man, what is that? Some guys said, well, that's a German army knife. And people were like, no, it's a fair barn knife. And no, it's, a, it's none of those. It's actually, it was actually the, uh, the Gerber Mark II but it was in, and people were like, oh, no, the Gerber Mark II has a serrated blade. Not the old one, not the Vietnam Cold War one. The Vietnam Cold War one looked just like that. So uh, for those of you, that, uh, and it's funny, are you boys, if I said Gerber Mark II, would you immediately have a picture of a knife in your yeah. brain, in your hot head? Yes. You know what a Gerber Mark II is? Yes. Okay. You know why? You do know. Why? Well, because I think it was in the communications that uh, you and the guy in Ohio that yes. that designed that knife that actually ended up being produced by Gerber. Oh, Hinder, Mark Hinder. Yeah, Rick Hinder. Rick Hinder. Yeah, Rick Hinder. I'm thinking that the Gerber Mark. Mark II was probably in that discussion somewhere because I remember it being in Ohio in a shop and you talking about that. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Mark II and the Mark I, uh, when I was in the Marine Corps, if you went into the PX, every PX on every Marine Corps base had Gerber knives. They had the Mark One, which is which was the shorter version, and they had the Mark Two. Oh, uh, it was very common for jarheads to buy those knives and take them to the field with them. Oh, uh, and then we also you also had the uh, the the BMF and the LMF. And they they used to say the BMF stood for basic multifunction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure it did. Yeah, yeah. Sure it did. Basic multifunction. It and, is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Basically <laughs> a multifunction knife. <laughs> like yeah, right. Yeah. No, we um, jarheads used to buy the BMFs and the LMFs and and the Gators and the Gerber was probably one of the was probably the top knife uh, company that was represented in our PXs. So, and it, what's funny because I hadn't thought about Gerber knives in a long time, and uh, I had to actually go and look them up, and they got purchased apparently by Fiskars. You know, Fiskars, the company Fiskar. Yeah. Yeah. Like and the scissors. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, uh, they bought them and they shipped all the fucking production from Oregon to uh, China. And so people are, if, if you get in knife forms, people are shit talking them. They're like, yeah, they, they shipped all their production to China and now they make fucking crap. And it may or may not be crap. I mean, to give the devil his due, it is possible to make good things in China, it's just difficult. You, you can't just allow Fiskars is a Finnish company, but with two ends, not one. Any hooser. So that was the uh, discussion there. And if you guys don't know what the freaking farfic new gun I'm talking about, well, that's probably because you don't follow our socialist media. But if you did follow our socialist media, you would see pictures of the JSOC 45 and the Gerber Mark II Vietnam era model and uh, the shotguns. The They're not Benelli's, they're Mac shotguns. And, and, Okay, let's be honest. They're one-to-one -one exact replicas of the Manelis, but they don't cost $1,800, so there's that. 
Oh man! So we could. I guess we could play the. Are we playing music? Are we not playing music? I just wanted to mention that the when having the Benelli Super Black Eagle Two was actually one of the most fun things I did at 4 H Shooting Sports Camp. It's like you, you being in the industry and being a writer, you got these cool things. Okay, the fifty cal was probably like the top of the line, right? That was the most fun thing. But as far as like a daily, that was use, a cool event. It was very much. And I, I know that a lot of people got a lot of value out of that because there's campers that were there with me. When we were kids. Mm-hmm. And to this day, they still like, Hey, remember that time? I was like, yes, I do. It was awesome. Um, that but anyways, time? yeah. The shooting the, camp. Yeah, that's right. The, <laughs> is this the public? Yes. I won't say what yeah. I'm <laughs> but this yeah, is the so public the, hour, but running the super that one time to through the shotgun discipline at the camp was pretty awesome because that was at the point where, I think what had happened was it was at the point in shotgun development where there weren't very many shotguns that existed that would cycle pretty much everything because every instructor was extremely impressed with that. There was a few instructors that used it and they were extremely impressed with the ability to cycle whatever was put in it. Trap. I remember one of them was saying that, wow, that thing cycles mud. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the uh, instructors, what were you like 14 or 15 yeah it was pretty something young. like that back in the day because because that was early on because after we sent that i didn't buy it i sent it back but uh after that then you you had a weatherby over under you remember that and it was a it was an over under weatherby with yeah hardwood. that was the one where i did shotgun three or whatever where they yeah. took us to the the trap houses i mean the skeet houses yeah and then there's another time when your sister it was a it was a Benelli, but it was a twenty gauge. Mm. Remember, I had your sister shoot a Benelli twenty gauge. Yeah, you know uh, that auto uh, Our our friend Jacob Herman says that twenty gauges are the best use for home defense that you can possibly have. So, I'm just gonna, no. I'm gonna bust his balls. No, no, not even. I never know when Jacob's being serious. I, yeah, I, yeah that's kidding. the thing is, I never. I sometimes I think, okay, he's going out on a far limb. Because he's a he's a grad, he's an alumni, he's a yeah. disciple of James Yeager, and and the you know that that you know, twenty gauge is the, is the heat for like for some self defense and home defense. It's like no, it's not. Yeah, and I, you know the thing is, is he never says J.K. <laughs> he never says just kidding. He just says insane, ridiculous shit, stuff. Yeah, and uh, and then just lets it ride. And and you have to guess whether or not he was running an elaborate joke or whether he was serious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And those of you that have listened to any of our episodes with Jacob, you know, it's like we start with one topic in mind and then we end up like going full circle around the moon and sometimes never getting back to that. Yeah, sometimes topic. you get there was there was Jacob's one like person on planet man. Earth that could keep him on topic and he's not with us anymore. That's pretty much it. Yeah. All right, you want to go ahead and uh, jump into if you're in the Discord, and I'm sure some of you are now. Uh, if you're in the Discord and you got a question, we've got answers. So go ahead and uh, jump in there and uh, ask ask your questions. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear; we also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Markle, and the shipping ogre, Zach Markle. Now, give it up for your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right, just FYI, that was not me or any of my devices, so whoever that was, shame on you. Oh, now we're here. And we're live, and we're ready to progress. This is great. This is fantastic. Did you, did you guys enjoy last week's shows? I hope you enjoyed last week's shows because uh, <laughs> straight from the strip mine, straight from the strip. Oh, uh, it was. We we spent all day on the floor, and then we went up into our room, and we sat down. And instead of taking a nap, which I really would have preferred to do, yeah. <laughs> uh, we put set up an impromptu studio in a hotel room. And recorded for you freaks. So you are welcome. You are welcome. Yes, indeed. And if you didn't enjoy it, well, sorry. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you at all. 
Uh, we did a bunch of bonus stuff. Holy crap. We How many bonus things did we do? Wait, I, I did uh, a quick bonus thing with Mark at, at Armed American Radio. I did one segment from him or with him. And uh, if you did not, uh, if you didn't hear that or you didn't catch up, it's part of his Mark live from SHOT Show 2023 thing. Uh, and we also did not one, but two segments with our, our good buddy, uh, Marty slash left hand of talking lead. We kind of got the band back together. The old band, uh, uh, it's pretty cool. was Tuesday, Tuesday uh, afternoon. Doesn't matter to you guys because he's just going to put them out as he sees fit. But, uh, yeah, it, w- it was Marty and Zeke, the original, the two guys who originally started talking lead and then Jared and I in the booth. That was the first time that we'd been in the booth all on the radio at the same time for literally years. Like what would you say? Five years or six years or it's been a long time. Yeah. It's been a long time because Zeke left to take, to become a TV star. (laughs) And uh, you're like, what shows he on? Don't worry about it. Uh, And an entrepreneur and a businessman and, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, the four of us being on the radio at the same time uh, had not occurred for many, Years. many, many, yeah, many moons. So it was kind of a Firearms Radio Network OG moment. Uh, and OG, who's left on FRN that was there 10 years ago? Well, one of the guys that was there actually bought the radio network and has multiple shows on there now. So he's still yeah. there. Sean, um, you mean Sean, yeah, Sean, we like shooting. Um, Troy, Troy wasn't there. Troy, Troy where were you? Gotten guns. Yeah. He was, Troy there, didn't go to the show. I didn't see him. Oh, he wasn't at shot. No, he he, shot. I actually, I messaged yeah. him and he said, he's taking care of some stuff that he had to organizational stuff with his business. So yeah, he had to do that so, instead of shot show. But people that are still active is us, Marty, Sean and Troy. Yeah. I think. And who, what's Troy's partner's name? I'm a jerk. I'm sorry, Troy's partner. I'm spacing. Um, you want to talk about spacing. Y- mm-hmm. You've never mentally spaced until you you're until you're four days into a trade show and you've talked to literally hundreds of people. And now and then you just become like blah 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 blah. blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> but like who did who was who did I talk to Tuesday morning, which seems like it was a month ago, but it was only three days ago. I don't even remember. Uh, that's that's why we that's why they hang our names around our necks. Yep. So that we can look down and remember who we are. But anyway, so we, uh, we did an OG thing with uh, with Marty, and then on Friday, so we started the show on Tuesday by doing an OG interview with Zeke and Marty and, and uh, Jared and I did that. It was really good. It was fun. It's in the can. And then Marty, Marty has to keep us on. He's like, okay, we're out of time. Like, dude, we could have sat there for three hours. Yeah. We could have talked for a long time. We could have, we could have. And then on Friday we pulled Jacob Herman into the booth and that was quite the audio circus that became the audio circus. I'm, I'm, I was serious when I said, cause you asked me if I wanted to, if I was coming over for that mm-hmm. and I said something along the lines of, yeah, I'll go, but I'm probably not going to say much. I'm just there to listen. I was hundred percent serious. If you guys go listen to it, I think I said probably like two sentences because the, the conversation that happens when dad and Jacob are together is well, just Jacob by himself is like, this is fascinating. You could have him talk to his, he could talk to his multiple personalities. Yeah. He could talk to the mirror and, and it would be an interesting show, <laughs> but you put him and dad and right next to each other and it's, uh, they oh, feed off of each other pretty well. Yeah. So, so the so point that of that was is a thing. To go listen to that when Marty releases it on the talking ledge. That's a thing. Yeah. That's coming. That'll be in the future. <clears throat> Marty, he recorded like 87 hours of, of content. So not that much, but he probably recorded 20 hours of content. So who knows when it's going to be out. So that'll be a bonus for you in the future. All right, let's go ahead and talk about Duracoat finished firearms from our friends at Duracoat. Yeah. 
Yes, indeed. Duracoat, because life is too short to have an ugly gun slash Duracoat, the choice of professionals. All right. So uh, we uh, went out, obviously, we talked to our friends at Duracoat, and obviously we talked about that last week. Uh, Are you high speed? My question is, are you a high speed operator? Are you a high speed applicator? Do you have what it takes to put a cryptic camouflage pattern on a gun? No. And you're like, you have to say it the correct way. What? You have cryptic? to say it. No. Are you high speed? Are you high speed? Are you high speed operator? That's how you got to do it. <laughs> so put on the voice. I, I The reason I bring this snap into a Slim Jim is uh, they have the kits they have the template kits they everything you need to do a cryptech pattern on a gun now the cryptech pattern is not for amateurs it is not for amateurs by any stretch of the imagination however however you could be high speed you could be a high speed uh applicator if you went to Duracoat University, studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat, if you did that, you could become a high-speed applicator, and you could. Uh, I would charge, if I did a Cryptek pattern on someone's gun, I would charge them uh, multiple hundred dollars. Uh, I, what would you charge? I have no idea because I've never done it professionally. Yeah, yeah. You have to, well, you'd have to fill in your hours and so forth. I'd say so you've um, done this way more than I have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and remember, you're not. It's not the time; it's the experience. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the but, end uh, result that the customer. Yeah. Gets. End result. If you'd like to do that, if you'd like to be a high speed uh, applicator, and if you'd like to be able to do a Cryptek pattern, uh, they have what you need because Duracoat is the choice of professionals. Now, my question number two is: You guys, by now, you should know that we have official student of the gun icon. Like Jared's wearing both, two of them right now. He's got one on his hat and one on his shirt. We have the patches. If you haven't gotten an icon patch yet, you're wrong. You could get one. Uh, we've got we've had stickers and so on and so forth. So we have an official color scheme. And when you come up with an official color scheme, believe it or not, colors have numbers. We talked about this during a previous show. So when you tell someone, if you tell uh, people like Duracoat, or if you go to a printer. You're like, I need, I need blue. And they're like, do you know how many blues Which there are? Blue. <laughs> Which blue do you need? And you say, I need blue six, nine, four. And they're like, oh, blue six, nine, four. I got that. What is our blue? Zero, zero, seven, five, 80. So we have our blue is zero, zero, seven, five, 80. Yep. A A D as in alpha AD, delta. Alpha delta. Zero zero seven five alpha delta blue. So my question to you weirdos out there is uh, if we if Duracoat offers an official student of the gun blue because that we have an official color, <laughs> we have an official student of the gun blue. It's the blue that's on the logo. It's on the icon. It's what we use in our official stuff. Would you buy it? Because we we were talking to them about doing that, we have a slightly darker black already, which exists, uh, and you should be purchasing whenever you purchase from them. And we have we're talking about doing a student of the gun blue. They're not going to do baby poop yellow because only one or two people out there ask for it, and yeah. quite frankly, that's not enough uh, to do a kit. We need at I least thought, two thousand six hundred and seventy nine people. Well, more not that many, but a hundred would be nice. Uh, I thought that that a a Rhodesian uh, a two color Rhodesian kit would be great, and maybe you guys just uh, aren't that enthusiastic or, or aren't that. It's a very niche audience, that's for sure. Niche is not. Is it a niche? So I have uh, I go through seasons in life where I go from mature to not so mature, back to mature, and while we were developing our branding guidelines. I was in the not so mature phase of my life and I really wanted the, our color hex code to be six, nine, six, nine, six, nine. Unfortunately it's a gray color. So I couldn't do that. It had to be blue. And so it ended up being what it is. There you go. Yep. Much to my dismay. There you go. All right. 
So if you'd like that, uh, well, send somebody a message. I don't know, Jared uh, or Zach or, or Duracoat or somebody. <laughs> Info at studentofthegun.com. That way we all get it and we can send it over to Duracoat for you. There you go. There you go. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, and boys, go ahead and take a look at the uh, the note that I put in there and you just give me a yes or a no. Uh, a as we talked about, we yes. were... Uh, in the high point booth and we did talk to those guys about the 10 millimeter did we zach were we able to insert the the explanation video from uh the the president of high point where he was talking about what's going on with the cannon because i remember we were going to oh we should probably i'll pull that oh, video i up. forgot about that yeah, I'm gonna yeah, pull no, I that couldn't up. do that in the studio, in, in the hotel room studio. Oh, that's right, because yeah. we were in a hotel room. We had an impromptu yeah. thing. So, uh, long story short, our buddies at High Point, uh, they came out with a 10 millimeter pistol. Took everyone by surprise. Uh, it was the bell of the ball. It's gonna be the bell of the ball. It was the bell of the ball over in uh, that area of shot, and people were talking about it and handling it and and so on and so forth and and so. That is the thing. 10 millimeters back, baby. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, but the, the YC9 update, uh, we're going to let... Zach, he's going to... You want to just drop it in post, or you want me to just shut up and let you play it? I want him to play it, because I want to see it. Oh, so okay. while he's doing that, we can talk about what we saw at the TSAS, Takaro, Takarov, sorry, and MAC, Military Arms Corporation, which we talked a little bit about earlier. But we, uh, what else did we see over there? There were some, some shotguns that were. Uh, uh, the Takarov's Mac brand. got. They they did. They've got the uh, bullpup shotguns. We featured one of them. I did a video. Uh, I did a video for you guys last summer, uh, where I I uh, featured and used one of their bullpup shotguns, and uh, it worked great except for when I tried to use the twenty round drum. But here's the deal. 20 round drums are huge they're heavy and they're finicky and that's just the way it is you're like no nah, i watched a movie where i got stuff <laughs> did it work great in the movie and it did did somebody fire 87 rounds out of a 20 round drum yeah okay well in reality that's a lot of spring and it just is what it is now the uh the Takarov bullpup shotgun that I used, I used five round mags and ten round mags, and they all run ran well. I shot birdshot, I shot slugs, I shot buckshot. They went fantastically. Uh, so what they did is they they have a winter version, winter white. They have a an, an OD green version. They have the standard black version, and then they have a desert sand version. Uh, T sauce went crazy with they they were like losing their minds with pistols. They've got more 1911s than you could shake a stick at. They've got the uh, the PX9 Generation Three, which is an insane value for what you get. Now we did the thousand round torture test last summer. Uh, what you get is the number of features you get in that pistol for what you pay for it. Let's let's be frank. Let's be honest. American gun buyers are some spoiled ass biatches. Can I say bitches on the sure thing? I think I can. I don't think it's one of the nine, nine, nine words, right? There's some spoiled, you're some spoiled ass bitches. Uh, because that gun in 2001 would have been $599. Okay. Factor for inflation and where we are now. And it's, it's like stealing it. It's like stealing it. So the uh, the the TSOS, the the PX9 pistols, uh, huge crazy value. The, and if you're a 1911 guy, they got the 10 millimeter, they got the nine millimeter, they got 45s. So they have nine, 45, and 10 in their 1911 stables now. And then of course Mac Mac is back, baby. The Military Armament Corporation. If you are a history buff, if you know that that MAC uh, is Mac 10 is not a rapper name, it was actually a gun. Uh, going back to the throwback of the Cold War Nam era, uh, and what they're leading off with, they're leading off with a JSOC pistol, and that stands for Joint Special Operations Command. And this is the pistol they have. They're like, well, it's got a, it's got a weird sights, and that's old, different, weird stuff. Yeah, that's what was the hotness in the eighties. Okay, 
what was the hotness in the 80s is on that gun. So if you want to have a gun that your grandpappy or your dad might have had, that is it. All right, Zach's got the video queued. So the next voice you're going to hear is going to be the president of High Point, and he's going to be telling you just exactly what's up with the YC9. Echo, echo, echo. Hey, I'm Joe Strassel, president of High Point Firearms, here with the new YC9 pistol. Guys, this is not what I do. I'm not the in front of the camera guy, but I wanted to give you an update on where we're at with this project. As you can see, we're so close to releasing this gun, it's just not quite ready yet. It has to be functioning at 100% reliability and safety, and it has to stay at a price point that everyone can afford. We're a small company, we have limited resources, and the last few years have been a struggle. We've seen delays in supply chain, materials, high lead times on tooling. But we're pushing forward on the YC9 as well as other new products like the JXP 10mm pistol. And we want this YC9 released more than anybody else. We've got a huge investment into this project and we're so close. But we have to have it perfect. Our customers deserve it to be perfect, but it also has to stay affordable. There you go. All right. There I don't you know go. what else we could add to that. And See, that's yeah, that, there's nothing else I can add to that, but but I will I will elaborate. Uh, people out there, the shoppers, the consumers, remember what I, I said earlier, the, the spoiled bitches of the American gun world, the American gun buying public. They're like, I don't know what these guys are talking about. These gun makers are making money hand over fest and I'm nana. Okay, calm down. The reality of the situation of 2020 and 2021 was, yes, the assembled, finished pistols and rifles and shotguns were selling. Also, the reality was the raw materials that go into making all of those guns were limited and hard to get. I was talk. I talked to manufacturers during, during 2021, and they said, we can't get plastic. Like, they're like, we all right, plastic doesn't, you know how plastic ships to manufacturers? It doesn't ship in, in slabs. It ships in barrels, right, of little tiny little pieces that you feed into a machine. Polymer was hard to get. And if you're a, if you're a company that orders $20,000 worth of polymer a year, and you're competing against other companies that order $1 million worth of polymer a year, guess where you go on the priority list? Uh, you go to the bottom. Uh, barrel steel. You know, you're like, barrel steel? I mean, steel is steel. Is steel. This is when idiots jump in here and they go, what is steel is all this? It's steel is steel. No. Your right. rebar steel. is the same as uh, yeah. barrel steel. Yeah, like, well, I want to, I, you can just go to, to Home Depot and get rebar. That's a, that's steel. Yes. Uh, yeah, high quality barrel steel. I would like to, was hope hard to and come think by. that there's nobody in our listening audience that would say those things. You'd be However, surprised. I guess anything is possible. Have you ever seen the comments on fascist book from people? Those people don't listen to the show. Yeah, okay. But um, have you ever seen the YouTube comments? Oh. Uh, but yeah, barrel steel was hard to come by. Polymer. Yeah, and the one person I talked to, he said, I never in my life as a manufacturer would have thought that we would be waiting. We would be on a waiting list. He said, we're 45 to 90 days out for, for deliveries of polymer, of plastic. So it hasn't been all like sunshine and lollipops and rainbows and unicorn farts it hasn't been you know all wonderful stuff now ha have things kind of come around yes things have come around uh we're not where we were in 2020 or 21 but the fact of the matter is you know if if you were a company that was working on a new project it was tough it was tough um so I'm, I'm not making just that's just reality. It's not an excuse. It's reality. Uh, it's reality. Ask the American automotive man. Ask, ask the American automotive company or industry, the American auto industry. What happens when your supply chain gets screwed? 
ask the ask the camper manufacturers. You're like campers. Yeah. Have you tried to buy a new camper trailer or RV lately? Like, no, why? Yeah, because they had literally acres, like hundreds of thousands of acres of camper and RV trailers sitting because they couldn't finish them because they couldn't get the taillights, the chips, the wires, and so forth. Um, and that brings me, that's going to take us to another subject at the bottom. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, last thing, juicy at juicy.com. Let's, Jared, tell people what you discovered about the new and latest Google YouTube uh, algorithm, their yes, newest sir. one. I've talked to a few content creators in the firearms world, and it, and it seems like what YouTube is doing now is if they unscrew or detach a silencer from the gun and then reattach it, that that is triggering the algorithm to say that the the you know the gun creators are doing something that they shouldn't be doing on video on our they're, platform. They're manufacturing so, guns on camera. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the technical specific specific. Dang, I can't say that word. Specifications. Right now. Yeah. Specifications are there, but the fact of the matter is, is that there have been a wide variety of content creators in the industry that are they do that on video and have done that on video for a long time. That's how you show a viewer what a silencer, how to, to attach it and detach it and kind of what it does, right? So YouTube changed their algorithm. And what happened was a lot of the content creators that have done that have got strikes now. Well, that's affecting their ability to run their content creation business because it either affects the viewership, the monetization, or both. Well, over on Juxy.com, that problem does not exist because it's owned by people in the industry that support the industry. And the content creators that are there will not receive strikes for adding a silencer and removing a silencer from the gun because that's part of the process of showing the viewers how the product works. So if you're a content well, creator it, and you're it, listening to me, go to Juxy.com, sign up, email their support team, and they can import all your stuff from YouTube. It's an in addition to platform. It's not an instead of platform. So you can still run your uh, YouTube campaigns until they don't let you anymore. Unless I know some people that are like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm removing everything from YouTube and I'm going to put it over here on Juxy. And that's also fine. So you can pick and choose whichever you want to do there. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the thing is, it's when you're dealing with that side, right? The like, well, uh, for instance, the silencer shop had to do a vi they had to post a video on YouTube, not on YouTube. They couldn't on YouTube. They had to post a video on Facebook explaining to the audience, telling them, well, hey, you may have noticed that our YouTube channel is down and it's down because we've received strikes, two strikes against our account and they're threatening to, to cancel it. So we pulled everything down and we're 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 what did he say scrubbing going through Auditing reviewing something like that yeah reviewing all of our content to make sure that it's compliant now i don't want to be a jerk here but i'm going to be a realist if you're it's that okay are we not done with the word compliant yet look what happened to california 20 years ago they about 25 years ago, they started creating these, these these arbitrary gun rules. And so what do manufacturers do? Like, well, OK, you can only have you can't have a, a detachable magazine. It can't be detached easily or without a tool. So they created a thing called the bullet button where you couldn't take the magazine out unless you used a tool. Right. Well, then the California people they did a campaign against the bullet button, Jared, and everyone in the audience. Do you not remember when California pop politicians went on television and said that the bullet button turns the gun into, well, the, the uh, equivalent of a machine gun? You push it and it, and it makes it fully semi-auto. If we want to go down that route now, the the news, the mainstream media in California is trying to push semi-automatic assault pistol 
Yeah, they're right. using the term assault pistol yeah. now. So now that they've they've whittled down the assault rifle to what it is, maybe the, I guess they're happy with it because now they're moving on to assault pistols. Yeah. So the, so the problem is that compliance. all your eggs in one basket with uh, I, I understand from a company perspective, it's you your main source of marketing outreach is on this channel and this channel gets taken away from you. So it's easier and quicker potentially to audit that stuff and put it back up because you already have an established audience there. Totally get it. The solution is to spread your eggs out into different baskets before that happens to you, right? It already happened to Silencer Shop. It's happened to other bigger content creators. Oh, yes. and they're not in the, the only industry, one. They're just an and example. it's not going to stop. So the best thing that you can do as a creator or a business that does video content is to go to studentofthegun.com slash Juxy, create an account, request Juxy to import your content, because then at least you know it's safe, right? And then you can take some time to figure out how Juxy fits into your marketing strategy, and that's fine. But now you have safe content. Your videos are on the Juxy servers. There's a diversified infrastructure there. The servers are actually here located in Utah, in the Salt Lake Valley. And then we use this, um, Juxy uses diversified infrastructure of cloud storage and and whatnot as well so there's multiple different redundancy systems there but get your content over there they can import it directly from your youtube go do that yeah the the idea that so you say okay well we're gonna we're gonna make sure that all of our stuff is compliant yeah but here's the deal dude all of your stuff was compliant a month ago and then they changed the rules do you think that after you go through and make sure that all of your stuff is compliant, that next month or six months, they're not going to change the rules again? You're, you're never going to get away with it. They're going, it's like California. What have we said about gun control since we turned down these effing microphones? With people who, have, who institute gun control, there's what? Never enough. Cognitive dissonance? I don't know. No, no, there's never enough. Oh, never there enough, will yeah. never, ever, ever. When you hate people being armed and independent, when you hate people having control of their own lives, there's never enough. Look at England. They banned rifles. Okay. They banned pistols. Okay. They banned shotguns. Uh, two rounds and blah, blah, blah. And then once they did all of that, then they started on knife control, right? Ladies and gentlemen, there will never, ever be enough gun control because it's about what? What's the key word in gun control? Control. When it comes to YouTube and Google, until, you know, I don't know, until we put enough liberty-loving conservatives in Congress to oversee them as a utility, and you're like, oh, private business, I can do anything they want. Nope. They took taxpayer money to develop and spread their, you know, spread their business, to grow their business. They use your money and my money to grow their business. They can't hide behind the, we're a private company and we can do what we want. Nope. I suppose they could repay all that money. They could, they could take all that money that they, that they got in tax breaks and, and, and tax incentives and pay it back. But the fact of the matter is, YouTube and Google are about control, not gun control, information control. Their, their plan is to control all information and anything they don't like is going to be scrubbed, removed, deleted, just like 1984. And if you think that the, the plan is to just make sure that your content is okay with them, that's a fool's errand. It's extremely short-sighted. And I'm, I'm all done talking about that. All right, let's move on to what's next. Brownells bullet points brought to you by Listen Louder, new, new listener. <laughs> yeah, you got me. New listeners. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG.
All right. I know. I got a little ahead of myself. So now we're going to talk about Brownells and Brownells bullet points. All right. Have you ever purchased a gun, quote, online? So when you buy a gun online, Jared, they ship it to your house, right? I'm going to have to check and and see if that's what can Uh, happen. uh, I'm not sure. I'm the head of the FBI, and I'm not sure if that's a thing. You mean the FBI, the people that are in charge of the ATF, that that are overseeing them? They're they're in charge of the NICS system, the, the National Instant Background Check system. The head of the FBI said in front of a congressional panel when asked, is it true that people can order guns online and have them shipped directly to their house? He said, and I quote, I'm not sure I'll have to check. That's your job. First of all, the answer is no. Second of all, the answer should be yes, because we have this little thing called the Second Amendment. But I digress. If you have not, if you've never ordered a firearm from an online entity such as Brownells, you can. It's not difficult. What you need to do is you need to go to your local brick and mortar FFL dealer and you need to say to them, you need to say to them or call them on the phone or whatever the process is. You're like, I want to order a gun and I need to do a transfer. And you just send Brownells that, well, they do that. Here's the thing. Brownells is so big right now that it would, if you have like, is for instance, Jared's in Salt Lake, the Salt Lake Valley, I could pretty much guarantee you that just about every major gun store in the city already has exchanged. They only need to exchange info one time. They don't need to do it every time. Oh, uh, if you go there and you say, Hey, do you have Brown else FFL? Do they have yours? And they're like, yeah, we've already, we've already mind melded. We've already done the exchange of information. You order it from Brown else. You pay for it. They ship it to your FFL dealer. You go there, pick it up. Bing, bang, boom. Bob's your uncle. Now you have a new gun. Jared, did you just open up the link that I put in the show notes for this? Yes. My point is, They've lost their minds. I know. Smith and Wesson, Brownells, they've all lost their minds. The deals that are going right now on firearms, on name brand, reliable manufacturer firearms are cray cray. It's time to buy. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when I told you, like, it's like the stock market, you know, sell, buy, buy, sell time. Now is buy. All right. They're. Smith & Wesson is doing a rebate. Uh, now, it's going to require you to do a little bit of effort, but brothers and sisters, it's a $150 rebate. It's not a $5 rebate. Let's face facts. You and I both know that you're never going to fill out the whatever for the $5 rebate. For $150? Yeah. Six hundred and forty nine ninety nine for an M and P Sport Two five five six carbine. If you don't have a black rifle by now, you, you should have one. Uh, that's one of the things that you should have. Uh, if you're listening to me, you should own a self loading uh, stoner based five five six rifle. You just should. the The deals that are going on right now are. are pretty insane so now is the time this specific rebate and i think i just put it in my cart and went through part of the checkout process and i think it's an instant rebate before you even check out i don't think you have to do anything after oh, some no of them you kidding? have to send in a, after you purchase you have to do the receipt thing and and give them your information so mm-hmm. that they can um have the information to give you the rebate but I, this one, it seems to be, a, it's applied in the cart. Wow, the, the Smith & Wesson KSG is on sale, too. Woo! So, Smith & Wesson, um, they, uh, they, they stole the design for the KSG, and it's on sale. Oh, did I say that out loud? 
Did I say the out the quiet part out loud? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's face facts okay when when you when you straight up steal somebody's design don't don't act surprised when you get called out no that's not it at all okay whatever um yeah you guys remember when they when they uh, originally stole the the ksg design and then like 30 days later they recalled them <laughs> Now, I did talk to my friends at, at Keltec, and they said, to their credit, after they recalled the uh, the KS, the Smith & Wesson KSG, they actually did figure out what, what they did wrong, and they got the bugs out of it. So, to, to kudos to them for fixing the, <laughs> the, the design of, that they screwed up. So if you've always wanted a Smith, if you've always wanted a KSG, but you wanted to buy it from Smith and Wesson instead of Caltech, uh, you can do that. the the uh, The Shield Plus is is on sale. It's a crazy good price. So my point in all in all of this discussion is to remind you guys that it, now is the time. Now is the time. Uh, Six fifty. It's you know what's, what's crazy is you can get the uh, the M and P's the M and P pistols for less than you than a five shot revolver. You really got to be married to the you got to be like I don't know. All right, I'm done pontificating about that. The the moral of the story is uh, if you if you need to buy a firearm if you're looking to buy a firearm. Get your butt over to Brownells right now, brownells.com. The link's in the show notes. Uh, if you don't have it, people are like, well, what one should I buy? Somebody asked me that the other, like, well, the other month. It was, it was in the fall. They said, well, I don't have a black rifle. Which one should I buy? And I said, just get one from a reputable manufacturer. I said, Smith & Wesson M&P 15 is a fine gun. There's nothing wrong with it. It's from a reputable manufacturer. Um, and <laughs> here's the thing. They can't. It, it's not like that's a new design that they had to work the bugs out of. The design is sixty years old. It, it's pretty much done. So uh, check those guys out at uh, brownhouse dot com. All right, uh, let's see. It's time for me to be quiet and for Zach to talk for a little bit. Shop sotg dot com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the Pimp Hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, That's what you say, can and should do. Yes. Would you like to talk about the book? What's new on the, what's new on the store, Zach? We got the brand new Beyond the Boo Boo book is available right now. Go ahead and head over to shopsotg.com. It's over on the homepage. And get your official Pimp Hand approved copy. That's right. That is exclusive from shopsotg.com. So yes, indeed. We've been talking about the What Beyond is the, the subtitle of that book? Traumatic Medical Training for Citizens? For Citizens? Question mark. Answer, yes. Beyond the Boo Boo, Traumatic Medical Training for Citizens. That's right. You, as a citizen, can and should get the training. You don't have to wait for the, quote, professionals. You don't have to lay there on the ground bleeding, waiting for the professionals to show up. You can and should do something. Uh, and in that book, we tell you what you should do, how you should do it, and inspire you to get your butt into a training course. Speaking of which, side note, Jared uh, after we're off, I need to talk to you about potential training uh, in Utah. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, it's time for a student of the gun homeroom brought to you by CrossbreedHolsters.com. Ah, oh, Bay Area shooting. I tell you what, uh, this is, uh, I don't know what to tell you guys, but, well, this is what I'm going to tell you. What I'm going to tell you is that gun control doesn't keep people safe. 
it makes you feel good emotionally because it makes you feel like you're, you know, the, well, we have to do something. You have to do something. What is the something? We, like, no, we I don't, have we, to do the good. We thing, have to not do something. something. We, we, if it saves one life, you're a liar. You do not care. You don't care about saving lives. But uh, so I, I had planned on talking about the Monterey Park shooting that took place the in because this is this is some psycho crap here. So uh, they had a a we've had New Year's Eve attacks and we've had holiday attacks. This is a uh, Chinese New Year attack. And it happened in California. And this is when you say, but how can that be? California has restrictions on your your. Didn't this guy know that he's not allowed to carry a gun in public? Didn't he know that? Didn't he know that murder was illegal? You see, that's that is the psychotic lunacy of gun control. The the psychotic lunacy of gun control and gun restrictions is the idea. It is based upon the idea that although felonious assault and murder are illegal, Someone is willing to commit a felonious assault. Someone is willing to commit murder, but they won't because we passed the law against what? Against 10 round magazines, against semi automatics. We it's against the law to carry a gun into this zone, right? We created a gun free zone. So someone who is mentally committed to, to murder is going to somehow not do it because they're not allowed to take a gun into that building. Yeah, but California already has strict gun control. California never met a gun control law that they didn't like. And yet, so this was, uh, and Jared, I want you to give us a little bit of the meat here. Because this, uh, this which is one are we talking about here? Uh, of the, the first one, the uh, Monterey Park gunman was making. I love how he didn't have any of this stuff with him, but we put it in the headline of the news to sensationalize. Yeah, it says, Sheriff, rifle, hundreds of rounds of ammunition were found inside Tran's home. The man accused so it was of like a dude pretending to be a woman and wounding nine others in Monterey Park, California had been stockpiling ammunition and was making homemade gun silencers inside his home. So, so they, they consider say, stockpiling ammunition hundreds of rounds, by the way, hundreds of rounds. That's like one training course. If, if you're not buying training ammo by the case, you're not serious. My gosh. Law enforcement officials and federal agents. So this dude was trans Hulu can. Uh, who con Tron? It's like John. It Tron. said it said inside trans home. Yep, mobile home inside a gated senior community in Hemet, roughly eighty-five miles southeast of Monterey Park. Inside, I've been to Monterey Bay. I don't know if that's the same thing. Monterey Bay Aquarium. It was pretty sweet. So inside, the killer was, was how old? I don't know. It's he was inside a gated senior community, so I haven't got there yet. Oh, okay. Inside, investigators found a, three, a 308 rifle, items indicating he was manufacturing homemade firearm suppressors, numerous electronic devices, including cell and computers, an unknown ma- amount of 308 and 9mm caliber ammunition. Well, but they said hundreds of rounds. So if it's unknown, how do they, how can they say hundreds? I love how they threw and they found numerous electronic devices is this 1984 now like how many households in america do not contain numerous electronic devices if you were in your house and i said gather up all of the laptops ipads and cell phones there in the average american house there'd probably be 10 all right, here here comes some of the answers to your questions. The munitions were in containers, and there were hundreds of rounds. We don't know exactly how much, Luna said. 
Authorities say that Tran, 72, walked into the Star Ballroom Dance Studio in Monterey Park late Saturday night and opened fire with a 9mm Mac-10 assault firearm. Okay, stop! You see the skid marks on the road there? You smell the burning rubber? No, it wasn't. Jared, what caliber is the Mac-10? It's 9 millimeter. No. What it says right here. No. No. It's 45 ACP. Well, no, oh, the news story. No, says yeah, the millimeter. News Channel 5 LA couldn't possibly be idiots. Uh, assault firearm. 9 millimeter Mac 10. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. The Mac 10 is a 45. The Mac 11 is what? This one you say nine. Er, no, it's three eighty. Do you guys know why the Mac the forty the Mac ten was forty five ACP and the Mac eleven was three eighty ACP? I Who saw can tell things. Me? I saw some stuff online that said Mac tens come in either forty five or nine millimeter, but were most popular in forty five. Okay. So when did the, that happen? The Military Armament Corporation Model 10 was 45 ACP. The Military Armament Corporation Model 11 was 380. Who can tell me why? All right, I'm going to tell you, audience, because both of those cartridges are in standard configuration are subsonic. Why is that a big deal? because the Mac-10 and the Mac-11 were made and designed with threaded barrels because they were made and designed to be fired with suppressors. When you fire subsonic handgun ammunition through a suppressor, you don't have a supersonic crack, and so it's extremely quiet. The Mac-10 and the Mac-11 were designed for special people to do special things. <laughs> Shall we say long before Chuck Norris got one and long before, you know, the, the, the Hollywood guys got their hands on them. There were special people with special agencies doing special things with those guns. Uh, they were made route. They're made of, of folded stamp sheet metal. They're made relatively inexpensively because the idea was we're going to empty this magazine and then we're going to open our palm, let it fall, and we're going to walk away. <laughs> so the whole reason why those were designed, now can you get rip-offs or modern, you know, the uh, SG arms or whatever, can you get 9mm Mac 11s? Kind of, yes. But this was not a Mac 10 9mm assault rifle or firearm. But my question is, so if he did the killing with a nine millimeter pistol who gives a fat rat's rear end that he had a 308 rifle in his house how does that matter how does oh, it matter how many electronic to, devices he had he in his had house multiple guns and hundreds of rounds of ammo and many electronic devices because he was a uh he was a this dude's militant. a 72 year old asian man i'm not sure if he was Tron is Tron Probably Vietnamese. Vietnamese. I think Tron's Vietnamese. But so thank God for the California laws restricting the ownership or the carrying of handguns by peasants. So that happened like three or four that happened three or four days ago. We got a brand new story that broke right as I was getting ready to do this show nbc bay area half moon bay mass well, shooting hold on a second we gotta this a new here a little bit on this other story because it says um on monday Hemet police revealed that tron visited police headquarters twice in early january and made bizarre allegations about his family uh this is a quote from the police it says tron visited the Hemet police department lobby on january 7th and 9th 2023 alleging past fraud, theft, and poisoning allegations involving his family in the Los Angeles area 10 to 20 years ago. He stated that he would return to the station with documentation regarding his allegations, but never returned. 
That is interesting. Yeah, there you go. Why would you do that? Uh, 72. Trying to understand a, a mentally ill so, person. So this next one, so there's a, there's a new trend. There's a new trend in deep state shooters, and it's no longer teenagers. It's the opposite end of the spectrum. So California, again, remember, California never met a gun control law that they didn't like. And this one is, uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. This Half Moon Bay mass shooting. Authorities try to determine motive. This was published five hours ago and updated 43 minutes ago as we read this. As, as we, we speak. Re record. Investigators on Tuesday were still trying to determine the motive behind a mass shooting in Half Moon Bay that left seven farm workers dead and one critically injured. The shooting took place at, at two mushroom growing locations, one at about 2.20 p.m. on San Mateo Highway, which is or San Mateo Road, Highway 92, and the other shortly thereafter along uh, Cabrillo Highway South, which is Highway 1. Multiple victims found at both scenes. The suspect, 67-year-old Chun Li Zhao. Okay, what the frick is going on in California? I don't know. We got believed to have worked at one of the farms and investigators believe he acted alone. He was taken into custody at 4.40 p.m. in the parking lot of the San Mateo County Sheriff's substation in Half Moon Bay after a deputy spotted his vehicle. Authorities believe he went to the station to surrender and say he's cooperating with the investigation. A semi-automatic handgun was found in the vehicle. You mean a semi-automatic assault pistol? Assault handgun, assault pistol? Yeah. He's being held without bail on multiple first-degree murder charges. Half Moon Bay Mayor Deborah Penrose spoke with NBC Bay Area early on Tuesday, saying that something needs to be done. She said, too many guns, semi-automatic guns, and automatic rifles need to be banned, period. There's no excuse for it. Um, what does that have to do with... Okay, whatever. 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 All the victims I, I'm a non I'm on I gotta ban the guns because that'll stop. That'll stop. Um didn't we just do a story about the angel beautician getting shot to death in a pub in Merry Old England? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, what does that have to do with anything? You know it's one hundred percent illegal to own a handgun in England. And yet somebody this woman got shot to death with a pistol. Well, that, that, that's cause, cause, but, that, but that. yeah, okay, shut up. Long story short, here's the deal, people. Uh, I wrote a whole book about it called Examining the Armed Citizen, where I detailed how the, the left, how the control mongers love criminals and terrorists. They love them because that's their excuse to control you. No gun control law could have stopped this. Now, perhaps if there would have been armed citizens, perhaps. If people were allowed to be armed, perhaps this wouldn't have happened. Oh, you can't tell me that armed citizens stop mass killings. Yeah, we can, because we have, I have a list longer than my arm where people are allowed to carry a gun. Uh, John Lott, 20 years ago, did a book called More Guns, Less Crime, where he detailed where counties where conce where shall issue concealed carry violent crime is down assaults on people murders rapes kidnappings all down because the criminal must be made to fear his victim because you think these two old this is this is psycho crap right here two old retiree asian dudes going on shooting sprees what they obviously didn't fear the police they obviously didn't fear judge nor jury the only thing the only thing will stop them is to be made to fear their potential victim that's that's psycho crap uh, carry your gun people and if you live in a place where they tell you you're not allowed to carry a gun then go somewhere else or just stay there and be a victim. That's your that's your choice. You need to be dangerous on demand. Oh, use the promo code SOTG when you go to crossbreedholsters.com. And 
uh, cool thing. They just released all of, one of the things that Crossbreed's really been focusing on heavily is helping women be armed citizens and be and one of the ways they've done that is they created a very comfortable belly band option uh for women men too but let's face facts most men aren't going to use the belly band option but a lot of women do a lot of women do this is kind of one of the favorite ways for women uh so they have a lot of the women are like, well, you know, the clothing I wear, if I wear a black one underneath my clothes, the black's going to show through, blah, 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 whatever. So they have a tan one. So if you don't, if you're a uh, uh, an arm chick out there and you use the belly band option, but you don't like the black one, well, they just hooked you up. And you can save 20% on that right now if you order and make sure you're using the promotional code. SOTG. Tell them the student of the gun sent you. All right, let's move on. Uh, we we already did a bunch of shot show after action. What what other after actions do you boys have? Um, that's pretty much it. What we pretty talked about it. last week. So if you guys yeah. are part of the public episodes, which you're listening to now, but you're not part of the grad program, we did two deep dives into our. Uh, it was our essentially a daily debrief that we did. Mm-hmm. For the grad program, you can go to getsotg.com, sign up for the dollar trial, and you can listen to those two episodes to get more information about what happened at SHOT Show and what we did and what we were interested in. And then if you want to, if you decide you want to stay after that, you can stay and it'll charge you the normal monthly fee after 30 days. But if you decide that you don't want to stay, then it's no strings attached. Okay. Get yeah, it was a, It was a different show this year. Uh, and one of the things that I've noticed, and, and I think it's just because the industry has learned, uh, booth appearances at SHOT Show are almost worthless unless it's Arlie Ermey, and he's not here with us anymore. Uh, we, Glock did not have a booth celebrity, like, and they usually do. Most booths, like for instance, about five, six, seven years ago, all whoever was hot at the moment in UFC was on the show floor. Matt Hughes, Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell. Uh, who else was hot in in? Uh, who am I missing? I'm missing one of them. Hughes, Couture, Liddell. Uh, Liddell was there. He was around. He was in Vegas. I didn't see him on the floor, but I knew some people that saw him. He was at one of the parties, uh, one of the after parties. Uh, Matt Sarah was there. How much? Ma- how many other guys did we meet? Who am I missing? There's a big one that I'm missing. That was big during the era of Couture and Hughes. Wasn't Forrest Griffin. Griff, Griffin's usually around because he lives in Vegas. He's usually at like one. He gets invited oh, to like the Mac. Oh, Lesnar is another big one. Lesnar. Uh, and then we also had wrestlers. They had booth appearances by Brock Lesnar, booth appearances by Braun Strowman. Uh, the Undertaker is usually there. Uh, Sean Michaels is usually there. My point is this. None of them were this year. None of them were. There was uh, one company that did celebrity booth appearances, and I went, and the celebrity was sitting uh, on a chair in a chair texting. There was nobody lined up. There were, there's, like, nobody. And I learned this, I learned this a long time ago. Unless you're Arlie Ermey, booth appearances at shot are generally uh, because the people that are there, especially this year, they're the quote guests of show or the tourists were not there. They they restricted the number of tourists and non-industry people uh, from being there. So if you want booth, if you want booth celebrities, go to NRA. That's where you, that's the booth celebrity thing. Uh, so there was a, very little of that. And SIG wasn't there. SIG was noticeably absent. And the SIG booth it shot was about the size of Connecticut. It was, I would say, probably the largest booth it was. It was the largest booth uh, in 2020. It was the largest booth. It, it took up several booth spaces. Uh, they weren't there. And what SIG did, I was talking to some other people in the industry, this is how I know this, is they took the money that they would have spent displaying it shot and put it into direct marketing. 
And so they're, they're kind of kicking their competition's teeth in right now because of that. And my question, and this is something that's going to play out in the future, just you guys just open your eyes and pay attention. How long is it going to take the competition to figure out that SIG is kicking their teeth in because they just threw another million dollars into marketing and advertising that they previously didn't have because they were wasting it at SHOT Show? So that is reality. That's reality. The shot show is not going to go away. It's not going to stop. But as time goes by, manufacturers are going to, I guess they're not writing sales. They're not doing sales. And I asked some people, I would go into the booth and I would say, hey, was it worth it for you? And a lot of people said, yeah, it was definitely worth it. And then I, I went into another booth and the guy's like, he said, yeah, we feel like we have to come. He said, but we also realize that it's flushing money down the toilet. We're not going to recoup it. Uh, they're, like I said, they used to, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they would write literally a million dollars worth of sales on the show of the floor. They don't do that anymore. It doesn't exist. And it's, and it's not really a, it's not really a direct customer marketing thing because direct customers aren't there. So it's going to change. It, it is, it is going to change. Uh, the hallway booths were, were, did you notice that there were probably half or less than half of the hallway booths or tables? You know what yeah. I mean? Yep. Although they spread them out on the two floors, so it might have been the same number, but mm. just spread out better. And then they were gone on Friday. Yeah. They were only allowed to be there till Tuesday, Thursday, and then on Friday they were all gone. Jeff on Discord says, did y'all take a look at the new Holosun thermal optic? And the answer is yes, we <laughs> yes. did. Yes. It's crazy. It's, uh, one of the hottest things at the show. And, the basic uh, when that model, thing releases, man, it's going to change the way that it's going to change the amount of people that have thermal optics. That's for sure. Yeah. The basic model, 1600, the advanced model, 2300. That's great. Yeah. And it's the size of a pack of cigarettes Yep, of a fat pack of cigarettes. That's insane. It's crazy. Uh, so, while Jared and I and Zachary, we listen to uh, we listen to a lot of podcasts. We we re do a lot of reading. I have a, a network of friends who essentially send me intel all the time. So I'm able to take the the different intel and balance it against what you know. This guy says blank. This guy says blank, and this guy said something else. Now, if you listen to those three different people. For instance, uh, Michael Yan. Michael Yan is not a professional economist, but he's a professional journalist, and he travels all over the world. And what he does is he goes places, talks to people, sees what he sees, and reports on that. And then you have the other people. You have the professional economists that don't travel, but they sit in an office and they they analyze, right? They look at history and they analyze. Uh, then you have, you know, you have other folks who uh, are, are in business and they're like, okay, this is what's happening with business and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, people ask me like, well, what was your thoughts about SHOT Show? And I, going into it, my thought was, and I'm going to see if I'm going to pronounce this. I'm going to try to pronounce this as if I, I were Roman. Civis pacum parabellum. Civis pacum parabellum. You've probably, I know you've all seen it written and P A R A, there's a space between it. You're like, ah, you didn't put a, you put a space there. It's not supposed to be a space. Okay. In the original quote, and it means it's Latin and it means if you want peace, prepare for war. Now, the nine millimeter parabellum, they took para and bellum and squeezed it together. Uh, but the original Latin, it's two words. Well, what do you mean? What I mean is this, no matter who you listen to, whether, you know, whether you like, I listen to all the various different economists and, 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 and journalists and reporters, the, the horizon, there's a big F S storm poop storm on the horizon. 
Putin is not done in Ukraine. Now, have you guys noticed that, that the news is not talking about Putin now? And they're not talking about Ukraine. They're, they're like bored with it now. You notice that? It's all the other stuff. And then the whole Ukraine thing just went. <laughs> nobody's talking about it. Well, because it's the mud season. It's the winter season. And over there is they have snow and mud and crap, and it's hard to move troops. Now, you can do limited operations in the winter, and they always do, but their primary operations are not going to happen in January and February. They're not going to happen until, until the sun comes out, warms up, dries up the roads and everything, and it'll probably be May. Military analysts believe that Putin is building up for a May push. You're like, I don't care. I don't live in Europe. I don't care. Well, here's the deal. The United States of America... St is still part of NATO. And what happens in Europe, we still involve ourselves with. Your Congress is, is laundering billions through Ukraine back into their own pockets. They're funneling billions to their cronies, ostensibly as aid to Ukraine. Even though we're, what is the, what is the, the amount, 3.16 trillion or something insane Jared, that the, our national debt is higher than it has been in the history of the, of the world. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can't do that. You just can't keep writing checks on an empty account and expect that nothing bad is going to happen. It devalues your money. I don't know if you kids have noticed, a lot of you kids were all excited going pre-Christmas, you're like, have you seen how gas is going down? Oh, man, gas is going down. Things are going to be back to normal. They sure are going to be back to normal. Gas has gone up 40 cents a gallon since January 1st. That's a huge spike. It jumped 10 cents overnight this weekend. You're like, oh, America will never run out of energy. America will never run out of energy. We'll never run out of food. We'll never... Then why, is the, why are the prices so high? Don't give me this. Please, Lord, don't look at me like I'm a fool and say, oh, the avian flu. We've had avian flus before. It never caused the price of eggs to double, then triple, then quadruple. And it's not just eggs. It's everything, Every freaking thing on the shelf in the grocery store is much is much more expensive we as a company you guys know that we do the the kits pocket lifesaver kits you if you don't know that i don't know where you've been when ukraine kicked off a few months ago overnight our medical suppliers sent us messages hey expect delays or out of stock they either expect delays, they told us, well, expect delays or current out of stock or this is what's happening. That's a regional conflict that is not in the United States, not even in North America, not even in this hemisphere. And American medical supply providers almost overnight were telling us shortages of gauze, shortages of gloves, shortages of tourniquets. What do you think is going to happen or may happen in the, these United States if come May, Putin says, all right, I've got a half million troops and I'm going to push them into Ukraine. And, and NATO says, no, we're not going to let you. Europe's going to go to war with, with Putin? If that does happen, what, do, what does the American normie do? We, we freaking fleeced out the, the, the grocery stores uh, for the China flu, right? So USA Today publishes headline, Europe at War. What do your neighbors do? I'll tell you what your neighbors do. They start panic buying. That's what your neighbors do. And everything coming out of Europe, you guys know we, uh, as a firearms industry, the gun industry is still heavily reliant upon the continent of Europe for primers, powder, guns, barrels, parts. 
do you know that we that the United that all of the makers of ammo in the United States don't make all the, they don't make the propellant powder here. Remington, Winchester, Federal, fill in the blank. They're all reliant on powder, on propellant powder from other countries. Now, we do make some in the United States, but we don't make nearly enough, not even close, to supply the demand. So what happens when all of the European propellant powder goes toward military contracts and doesn't come here? I was told that the Australian propellant powder is all being uh, earmarked for military contracts. So there's they're not selling it to commercial manufacturers, and that means you. What happens to the supply of ammunition when all the propellant powder is earmarked, or a good percentage of it is earmarked for the war in Europe and Asia? You, you're going to go in your backyard and with, your, with charcoal, and you're going to make smokeless powder? Ladies and gentlemen, my theme for the SHOT Show for this week is look to the future, the realistic future. The realistic future is this. You need to have, you need to be prepared for shortages. You need to be prepared for expensive food and expensive fuel. You need to prepare. If you want peace, you sure as hell better be preparing for war. Right now, as I'm speaking these words, see, we're in the eye of the hurricane. We had the big, the first wall. It slammed us. Now things are calm. If you've ever, if you guys live in the South, man, you live on the coast, you know how it is. You get slammed, and then all of a sudden the sunshine comes out, and you look up in the sky, and you're like, oh, it's over with. No, it's not over. There, you're just in the middle of it and the, the back half is on its way. The back half is on its way. Question, did I check out the Mete MC9? Yes, looks cool, and it also looks like I might be able to get my hot little hands on one in the very near future. So that is the thing. I'm not trying to scare you, but let's face facts. If you look around at the world, the world is a changing, and there are criminal. And it, we're in a position of this because there are criminals in position of power. There are greedy, selfish, maniacal criminals who care nothing about you, your family, your future. They care everything about filling their own pockets and about being in control and controlling you. And until and. This nation, uh, this world, but this nation is we're like an alcoholic and we haven't hit rock bottom yet. And we haven't decided as a people that we're not going to take this crap anymore. A lot of your neighbors are idiots. They took their shots. They're wearing their masks still. Uh, and they're willing slaves. And so until those people are legitimately hurting, they're not going to come around. And some of them will never come around because they're just gone, their brains are just broken. You need to prepare. If you want peace, prepare for war. I didn't make that up, that's thousand years old. It's probably carved in, in marble in some place in, in Rome or whatever. But uh, All right, tomorrow, we got a lot more to talk about tomorrow uh, on the bonus hour, and I hope you guys will be willing to join us. If you'd like to join us for the bonus hour tomorrow, well, you can do that. Boys, tell them how they can do that. Magic, you go to getsotg.com. Getsotg.com, sign up, follow the, the instructions, and you can join us for the bonus hours on Friday and Saturday. Or no, <laughs> Thursday and Friday. Well, you, you can, can listen on Saturday. You, yeah. you can listen Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's the great beauty of on-demand radio, right? But until then, until we're all together again, remember this. You're a beginner once. You're a student for life. 
Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. 